Hi. Today I'd like to talk to you about the future of medicine, computational chemistry. Um, so just for a quick introduction, hi, my name is Sarah. I'm a sophomore at Los Altos High School, and I'm also a high school researcher at Aspiring Scholars Directed Research Program, which is basically a program that allows high schoolers to conduct their own original research. And so there, I'm a synthetic organic chemist, and what I work on is in the drug discovery process. And that's how I can tell you that the drug discovery process takes a really, really long time. You start off with something called analog design, where you figure out what you even want to make. And oftentimes, people will want to make libraries of compounds even up to like 100. And then you go on to chemical synthesis, and that's like where you actually go into lab and you make whatever you said you wanted to. And this process takes a really long time because you have to start off with setting up your reaction, and then after you set up your reaction, you have to purify it. And finally, you have to characterize it. And these three steps can take up to weeks. But then you combine the fact that perhaps you said that you wanted to make 100 compounds in the beginning. You have to do this process over and over again 100 times. And oftentimes, this process takes up to years to even complete your compound library, and that's barring any complications. And finally, after you've spent perhaps two to three years making your library of compounds, you can finally test it. And imagine how disappointing it is if you spent two to three years working hard to make all your compounds, and then you find out that none of them work. Obviously, this process is highly inefficient because we see this happen all the time. And that's where computational chemistry can step in. Computational chemistry can pre-screen our compounds before we actually go into the lab and synthesize them and spend inordinate amount of times trying to make them and finally test them. And so to do this, we use computer models for drug discovery. It starts off with de novo molecular design, which is almost analogous to the analog design of the traditional drug discovery process. And it's basically where you figure out what you want to screen. Then you go on to something called density functional theory. And this is something you can just download onto your computer. It's completely open source. And you just plug in your molecule through there, and it comes out and it's completely optimized. It's like it would be in the real environment. Then after that, you can use something called molecular docking, where you see how your compound interacts with its target. So for example, if your compound's supposed to interact with a protein, this molecular docking can first of all show you the orientation of it, but second of all, it can tell you how well this uh, compound would bind to the protein. And that's really powerful, because if your compound binds really, really well to that protein, then you can basically say, hey, this is actually worth synthesizing. But if it doesn't bind very well to the protein in the first place, you don't want to be spending those years making it. And then finally, you can do something called a molecular dynamic simulation. And this just shows you a real-time simulation of your protein against your compound. And this is really cool because you can see perhaps your protein um, folding or something. And all of this just goes to show that there are so many computational techniques to help you refine the drug discovery process. And so at our lab, we have this 26-core server, which we use to screen 400 compounds to find a treatment for COVID. And we basically just use those 400 compounds and we plug them into the computational chemistry process. And so here are a couple articles from the SARS-CoV-2 outbreak a year ago. And I think it's really noteworthy to mention that we actually started our research on COVID right at the outbreak of the pandemic. And so even though no one was allowed to be anywhere in person, we were able to continue our research because all of our research was now stored on our computers. And so if you want to figure out how to cure COVID, you first have to understand how COVID works in your body. And you can kind of think of it like this. It's like a long chain of events. And at the end of it, COVID proliferates inside your body, making you sicker and sicker. But if we cut off one of the links to those chains, COVID won't be able to grow through this process, and it's not going to be able to proliferate. And so that's exactly what we did. We cut off this process right here, where there is an enzyme in your body called the main protease, and it binds to the COVID protein. And since we can stop that process, we can stop COVID from being able to proliferate inside your body. And so to do that, this is an example of our inhibitor. And the bottom thing is basically the protein that we were trying to inhibit. And you can kind of think of this as a door stopper. Our inhibitor is a door stopper, and it's permanently stuck there so that COVID can no longer enter. It can no longer bind with the protein because our inhibitor is already stuck there. And so to do this, we actually use computer models for drug discovery to test whether or not our inhibitors would actually work before we went into lab and synthesized them. 
So first we start off with some biological inspiration for our protein. So this is the native compound that binds to our enzyme. And we just militarize that. So this is basically the de novo molecular design portion of the computational chemistry process. And then after that, we plugged it into the rest of the steps. So the density functional theory and the molecular docking. And once we did that, we identified our hit compounds. So you can see here, these are our two best compounds. And you can judge that because they have the two best binding affinities to our COVID enzyme. And because of this, we have cut down our library of 400 compounds to simply two. And synthesizing, going through the traditional drug discovery process with 400 compounds might have taken us even 10 years. But two compounds could take us a matter of months. And not only that, it took us only two months to even um, screen them on the computer. And so I just really, really want to emphasize how cool computational chemistry is. Not only that it's improving the drug discovery process by making it so much faster and so much more efficient, but the fact that it is so accessible. The fact that teenagers like me and my friends are able to use this program to find treatments for COVID really means something. And I hope that computational chemistry will improve the future of medicine by not only making it more efficient, but by making it more accessible and creating a safer world for everyone. Thank you.